Live from San Francisco, celebrating 10 years of high-tech coverage, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2019. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back, this is theCUBE, two stages, three days of coverage, our 10th year here at the VMworld show. I'm Stu Min, and my co-host for this segment is Bobby Allen, and welcome back, two of our CUBE alumni. As I said, back in 2010, we didn't even know what a CUBE alumni was, people were trying to figure out what we're doing, but now we have thousands of them, and both of these gentlemen have been on the program a few well, times. Thank you so for having I, us back. Uh, you're, you're welcome. So, first, uh, uh, over we have uh, Ajay Patel, who I, I believe was actually doing another filming even with our crew Absolutely. earlier today. The He's Accenture the, Innovation Center. Uh, excellent, <laughs> beautiful building Accenture beautiful has here in San Francisco. Yeah. One of the other benefits of being back in San Francisco is we've brought in people and it's really easy to get in and out and do right. other things in the Valley, but uh, Ajay is the Senior Vice President and General Manager of the Cloud Provider Software Business Unit inside VMware, and one of his partners uh, is Rackspace. We have Peter Fitzgibbon, who's the Vice President of Product Alliances with aforementioned Rackspace. Yeah, super to be back in San Francisco. It's a great change from Vegas. Yeah, you know, there, there is some debate in the community. Of course, it's a little more expensive here in San Francisco, and uh, you know, there, there are other logistic challenges. We're excited to be back here, and uh, yeah, really excited great. to, to, to be talking with both yeah. of you. Uh, P Peter, let's start. You know, Rackspace has had a long, long partnership with VMware. When I, you know, remember back to like, you know, VMware environments hosted, it's like, yeah. you know, Rackspace was the one with a lion's share in that market. Market. And you know, Rackspace has gone through a lot of changes in the last 10 years that we've been doing this coverage. Uh, when I think about multi-cloud and all of these environments, you, you've got a nice perspective on this yep. and lots of customers you'd work with. So give us the update on what you're hearing from customers and your relationship with VMware. Yeah, so, so 20 year history with VMware that we're very proud of. Uh, I would say it's almost been rebirthed in the last two years though. About two years ago, yep. we were one of the first VMware Cloud Verified Partners. Um, we launched our VMware Cloud uh, uh, VMware Cloud Foundation, private cloud. We added to that about six months later in customer uh, data centers. We're now uh, one of the major partners of VMware Every Cloud and AWS. AWS. Yep. And, and that's one of the areas that we're continuing to ex expand upon. Um, we announced some new services this week, specifically around VMware Cloud and AWS, uh, or support of HCX, both for migrations and for ongoing support, as well as a number of what we call Rackspace service blocks, which are additional managed services that we're applying specifically for VMware Cloud and AWS. So exciting times at Rackspace, and VMware continues to be a, like a major part of our portfolio. And thank you for all the support, Peter. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Ajay, uh, Bring us up to speed with what's happening in, in your space. You know, a lot of attention gets paid you know, every time. Uh, you know, I saw you know, Sanjay Poonin up on stage at the Google Cloud event, and of course, the AWS partnership has been one of the biggest stories right. in all of tech uh, for the last couple of years. Uh, and that's been extending to, you know, first it was like, wait, you know, Rackspace has data centers, and many of your other partners right. have data centers, but how do these all play together, and how does the VMware software pull them all together? So Stu, I think you and I have been talking about this world of hybrid multi. Mm -hmm. And we've been arguing whether it's just a transitionary phase yeah. or here to stay. Hopefully that debate's over, right? Hybrid's a new reality, mm -hmm. multi-cloud's a new reality. And we talk about these hyperscalers, but you know, Rackspace and many of my VCPP partners, they've been long standing in this journey with us. I don't know if you caught uh, Pat's keynote, we demonstrated that we have over 10,000 data centers through our VCPP network, and Rackspace being one of our top, our top 10 partners. Yeah. So you start to start seeing this mix of VMware everywhere, mm -hmm. whether it's through a service provider cloud, a customer managed cloud, or even a hyperscaler VMware cloud you now have the ubiquitous VMware infrastructure to play it, with. Right? At some point, it's just cloud. It's <laughs> just we yeah. we stopped oh, calling multi-hybrid. I, I, I think it's no that's longer a, about location. That, yeah, that, that, that is a great point. When I talk yeah. to customers, most of them, they have a cloud strategy. It's usually not a hybrid or multi or all these things. Here's the nuance I want to you know, ask for a second, and then I definitely want Bobby to jump in with what he's been talking to customers about. You know, hybrid cloud is reality because customers have their own data centers and they have public cloud. The ideal of multi-cloud, customers have multiple clouds, but you know, one of the definitions I put out there is multi-cloud exists when 
the multi-cloud solution is more valuable than the sum of the pieces. Right. And I'm not sure that we're quite there yet. Absolutely. I think we're starting to yeah. move down that path, but what, what, what are you both seeing and do, does that resonate with what you see today? Yeah, look, all, all of our customers have, have, have workloads in multiple locations and trying to provide the assessment of where to put the right workloads at the right time is one right. of the, the key values that we hold, hold dear. And, and before we ever talk about where we're going to put a workload, we assess what, it, where, what a client's environment is and determine maybe this is an AWS workload, maybe this is a, a VMware and AWS workload, maybe this workload really belongs in the data center for due to laws of land, uh, lo laws of gravity and physics. Right. And I think what's happening really is that any application, you're typically choosing a platform or the cloud service that you, that's driving the decision. Collectively, what ends up happening because of that you're in multiple clouds. So I think what's, it's a result of the reality that applications are driving location and platform choices. And the way to drive consistency is trying to pick a few common things, whether it's Kubernetes as a cloud platform or VMware, right? Those are the way to kind of unify these disparate choices that are made individually, mm -hmm. that are collectively making our, each of our customers multi-cloud, right? Jay, I want to piggyback on that because you talked about the applications driving a lot of the choices. Right. When application teams, in my experience, are kind of making the choices, they don't care about a centralized strategy. Right. And obviously this very powerful partnership can support multiple places and ways to run your workloads. How do you lead the witness a little bit towards simplification, and just because you can do it doesn't mean you should do it? Yeah, so I think what's happening from our perspective is, depending on which side of the IT house you're in, if mm -hmm. you're part of the core IT that's running and maintaining mission critical systems, mm -hmm. you're really looking for something that's reliable, performance, scalable, secure. Right. And you may be looking at a hardware refresh or you're looking at your data center strategy and you're looking to migrate that workload. You're not looking to really rechange the app just because it's cool. Right. If you're part of a digital transformation effort, you're looking to say, okay, how do I get something out there quickly? Right. How do I integrate and leverage my data and application assets while leveraging cloud services? Right. So we're seeing this tension in some ways where the kind of net new mm -hmm. is really pushing the envelope of cloud with self-service, elasticity, new capability. While as the old guard is like, I got to keep my running business running, keep it secure. Mm -hmm. And how do you bridge these two worlds and bring them together? We call it DevOps and you know, IT and, and the traditional kind of new developer. The reality is you're trying to bring the two worlds on a common platform, mm -hmm. whether it's VMs or containers. And so the exciting part for us is how do we unify? Right. How do we deliver this experience and give them that choice where it makes most sense? And blur the lines between public and private. Right. Those are just locations that makes most sense where for your customer or your application that right. you can drive. Excellent. Yeah, we, we find ourselves in those conversations all the time, trying to bridge two, two sides of the equation at a customer and trying to get them together to uh, on a unified strategy and, and right. weighing the pros and cons of, of, of different locations for different workloads. So it's, it's not easy, it's not a challenge, of course. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, Peter, I, I'd love you to bring us inside some of those VMware on AWS customers because yeah. you know the, 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 some of the first customers I talked to, it was, you know, I'm a VMware shop, and there's a part of the group that's like, oh my gosh, I can't change, and this was the driver to say, hey, you don't need to, right. so we can bring you along, right. but the value once again needs to be, oh hey, I need to do some innovative things. I want to be able to access some of those yep. cool, amazing <laughs> services that you know, everybody's providing on a, on a daily basis. So, you know, are you seeing that, that progression? Are there any interesting yep. use cases that are coming progression out? Progression is the word. Yeah. We, we call it progressive transformation yeah. inside Rackspace. Like, mm. you're a VMware customer, let's, let's bring you on the journey towards public cloud, right. and let's help you leverage those AWS services. So we find ourselves in, 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 a, in a great position with a very large number of engineers that support our native AWS workloads, we brought those two groups together from our VMware expertise and our AWS expertise. Yep. So when a customer lands on VMware and AWS, I consider it a failure with it if they haven't transformed part of the application within three months. If they're not really consuming those native AWS services. Mm -hmm. And that's what we really try and jack. It's like, mm -hmm. get our AWS engineers looking at those workloads. Let's start consuming those yep. native services. And that's what we're finding really exciting about how customers are starting to adopt and starting to plug and play into those, some of those services. I mean, I look at it as, you know, you, you'll see a team, this, uh, Sanjay called it M&Ms migrate and modernize, mm -hmm. but part of the migrate is often modernize your infrastructure first by putting on a modern pl cloud platform, mm -hmm. and then modernize your application using cloud services. I would say it's M, M, N, M, yeah. right, mm -hmm. to follow through, because it's not just about lifting and shifting, keeping the old crap as it is. Mm -hmm. You got to really start to look at how do you drive innovation, drive you in a better place to, so you can operate it more effectively, right. and then modernize for application results. And you know, your service blocks yep. are really catered to helping that customer. So maybe yeah. you can talk a little bit about you yeah. know, or, how or you're building the services that complement our offering. Yeah, right? so our service blocks is, in, in the past we offered kind of one big block managed service to a customer. Mm -hmm. Realize, let's decompose that and offer the customer what they need Bite at a specific pieces. point in time. Exactly. So we think of it like Lego blocks, where at some point you may need just some support, other 
point in time you may need some design. architecture services yeah. and design. And other times you may say cost optimization, this sort of stuff. So over time we're adding on these Lego blocks, if you will, to add the customer, give them what they need at the point they need it and, and not more. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, a, it's an exciting concept that um, every month we're adding more, more services. We, we launched a uh, Rackspace managed security service block today, specifically for VMware Cloud. Mm -hmm. um, so we continue to add these and provide incremental value. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you a little bit of a controversial question. So there's a saying, pioneers take the arrows, but settlers take the land. Right. So if I'm a technology leader, how do I embrace all this newness without getting shot, yep. partnering with your firms? So, uh, you know, we always say lock-in's bad, mm -hmm. but the reality is we always choose strategic technology platforms. Okay. And if you're a VMware customer, I hate to say it, you're running on VMware infrastructure, right. you have VMware ecosystem, you have VMware runbooks, you have VMware partners managing your on-prem assets. Mm -hmm. What if I could show you a path forward on any cloud of your choice without having to change any of your day-to-day -day operation while leveraging the innovation feature? Mm -hmm. What is the safest path for you, Mr. Customer? Right. And so in this world, you can think of us being the laggard in some sense, okay. right? because we're not pushing them to a single destination. We're giving them that choice, right. leveraging the strength. I think the innovative part that we've done today is really brought containers and VMs in a single solution. Mm -hmm. We talked about containers killing VMs two years ago, right? Mm -hmm. You know, VMware was going to be in trouble with Docker. <laughs> VMware was going to be in trouble with OpenStack. Right. Where are those two companies today and where is VMware? Right. It's about simplifying for the customer a common solution. Right. And we're taking those choices away and making it just easy, right? Mm -hmm. And giving partners who can help them on the journey. So yeah. I would say we're the safer choice. Okay. That would be my response. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Peter, we're not going to ask you about OpenStack. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm still going to get him to take everything back to VMware, yeah, okay. so it's, it's a work in I'm progress. I'm sitting beside you. <laughs> right, right. Um, interesting point you said, the, the settlers, right? At, at this uh, point, VMware Cloud and AWS is, is, is two years old. Mm -hmm. I think that first year well, was definitely some pioneers out there, yes. but now I think we're, we're really in there where the settlers are coming on and okay. we're seeing large scale adoption of the platform and, and now that, that VMware is offering more and more services natively, we can add more and more those managed services and help those customers really transform and not worry about the underlying IaaS if, Absolutely. if that's yep. rock solid at this point. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, Peter, I would like you to get into a little bit kind of the containerization and, and Kubernetes. You know, Docker, obviously a lot of hype, but containerization yes. is hugely important. Uh, you know, we, a lot of the keynote this morning was talking about cloud native. I talked to lots of customers, you know, there's some that, yes, they will want the VMware journey, but many of them say, well, if I'm going to the cloud, you know, I can just use containers. Why would I have the overhead of VMs? When Cloud Foundry was originally created, it was not for that type of environment. So, you know, where 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 does that fit into, you, you know, your world, containers? Yeah, and yeah we, we actually launched some more services on that uh, today as well. Uh, some more uh, professional services, managed services, specifically around advanced Kubernetes support um, across all our platforms. So this just isn't just a, a VM more announcement, this is on AWS, Microsoft, Azure, and Google. Mm -hmm. um, so another exciting progression in, in our hybrid cloud story and making investments in those resources to deliver Kubernetes. Kubernetes. Um, we also launched a, a cloud native service block today as well that is really giving customers access to deep engineering skills and giving them uh, cloud reliability engineers that can help them transform their workloads and get them ready for the cloud. Mm -hmm. I think for us, if you, uh, Project Tanzu, sorry, Tanzu as a, as a solution, and Project Pacific are two marquee announcements we made this week. Right? And if you look at what we're focusing on, the build, run, manage mm -hmm. aspects of the full life cycle and our active participation in the Kubernetes community, we're starting the beginnings of what Java, I felt like Java in 2000 when I was at BEA, right? Mm -hmm. WebLogic in Java was the right runtime mm -hmm. for running and building new apps. Kubernetes and containers are the new runtime for building distributed apps across, uh, across cloud platforms. Mm -hmm. And we're in this early journey and we are uniquely in our position with a combination of Pivotal for Build. With Project Pacific, we're bringing containers into, v into vSphere, so VMs and containers become first class. To your point, we demonstrated 8% performance improvement over bare metal on a vSphere container-based solution. Starting to engineer based on the key scheduling work that we do in the kernel and in the hypervisor, we're driving that deep into the Kubernetes platform into the core platform itself. Mm -hmm. And then manage is going to be the new interesting bit. What is that control plane that everyone's going to fight over mm -hmm. and the managed services partner who can help them choose that. So I think the battleground's more and more going to manage. Mm -hmm. I think we've secured our base with the, the runtime and the build will be about choice, and, depending and on the kind of applications you want to build. Like, 
Tanzu is music to our ears. It's like, we can now, again, focus on what's the additional managed services exactly. and service blocks. And how do you help the customer build that. apps and yeah. build, change totally. the engineering culture to what mm -hmm. you provide? Yep. Mm -hmm. We just give you the runtime across any of these clouds. We want, we want to help everyone transform their applications, also transform their culture and how they, how they exactly. do their business and all that wrap by our fanatical It's the engineering transformation is a big one. SaaS transformation we talk about internally for us, VMware. Same with our customers. You got to change the mindset of how you build applications in this Agreed. container services based architecture. Agreed. Right? Agreed. What else is keeping uh, folks up at night that you talk to? Love to know that, just hot take. No, nothing keeps me up at night. This is <laughs> an exciting world we live in, so loaded question. What, what excites me, uh -huh. what excites me is the progression that VMware and AWS is making. Okay. And the announcement with NVIDIA and then GPU access, I think, early next year. I think that could be another wave of VMC adoption. So not keep me up at night, but um, keep me very interested and excited. I think to that point, I think I, I'll build on what Pat just said about tech for good. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have a joint customer, Feeding America. Yep. Yes. Right? We're now taking technology and making it available so that you know, the 60,000 plus distribution centers that they have are up all the time. They don't have to worry about infrastructure. They can focus right. on feeding right. uh, the cause, which is I think 47 million wow. people being fed. Well, I mean, it's scary, it, it, right? I want to bring it back to the organizational discussion you said right. you're helping customers with, because right, you know, if they were worried about you know, racking, stacking, configuring, like move uh, up you know, doing all yeah. of those things, um, you know, how do you help them? Because I, I tell you, I, I talked to a number of customers right. at the show, and they said, look, my roles in my organization are still Changing. hardware defined. Yep. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it is tough to move into a software world, but if I want to get to the tech That's for it. good, right. I need to be able to uplift move the organization. My skills, so uplift my organization. Yes. Yep. Yeah, yeah it, 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 it's difficult, right? Organizational change is different for every, every company, but as part of dis digital transformation is also organizational transformation. Mm -hmm. So we're helping customers think about what, they, these, what is the progression from a, a VMware administrator to a DevOps. Or a cloud admin. A cloud yeah. admin, indeed. Right. So. Right. It's not easy, it's a short answer on that. I think for us it's really starting to drive the cultural change, providing them the tools, mm -hmm. and bring the set of services where they can be a coach, right? Mm -hmm. uh, be the trailblazer who can come in and help change the organization, teach them how to do it right. Mm -hmm. Not everybody will get there, Hopefully the bulk of the organization can shift, right? right. Peter and Ajay, want to give you the final word uh, so you want uh, you know, your, your partners and customers to understand takeaways from VMworld 2019. Yeah, it's a great to be here as usual. Thanks for, thanks for having us. I think Tanzu's really exciting, the progression that we're making with adding service blocks on top of VMware and AWS and our other hybrid cloud announcements. So uh, great to be here, but Tanzu's kind of the, yeah. the story of the show. For me, it's uh, VMware's here to stay. We, want to be a, we have been your strategic partner for the last decade. We're here to stay for the next decade. We're going to help you solve these hard, complex problems and give you the choice you need across a broad ecosystem of partners and solutions. So very excited to be here and deliver that value. Excellent. Right. Well, thank you and Peter, thanks so much for joining us thanks. again. Bobby Allen, thank you for co-hosting. I'm Stu Miniman, and as always, thank you for watching theCUBE.